reading comes from John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8, which is the story of the vine and the branches, as mentioned in the children's sermon. Jesus is speaking with his disciples. It's near the end of the time that he will be with them. He's trying to explain to them what life is about and how one lives life with meaning and with joy. And life comes out in a good place. So let us listen. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch of mine that bears no fruit he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already made clean by the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, he it, he it is that bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. If a man does not abide in me, he is cast forth as a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered and thrown to the fire and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, whatever ask, whatever you will, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, and so prove to me to be my disciple. As my Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. Here ends the reading, the word of our Lord. A great branch in one of the tremendous vineyards in California. And that branch bore incredibly beautiful grapes. Florence, they were just lovely. And the person who owned that vineyard always asked the workers to go first to that branch and get those beautiful grapes because he knew once those grapes were in fruition that the whole vineyard was ready to pick. And every year they would go and they would get those grapes. And they were beautiful. But that branch began to believe that it itself is what was bearing that fruit and those beautiful grapes. So it saw less and less important to the branch that it grew on. And pretty soon, Margaret, it turned out that when they went to pick those grapes and bring them in to the owner of the vineyard, he would look at them and he'd say, you know, they're not as nice as they were the year before. And for a number of years that kept happening till finally when the grapes were brought in, they were withered. And they had nothing to them. They had nothing to offer. And so the owner of the vineyard said, well, go out and clip that branch off because it's bearing nothing now. And so the branch went. How often don't we live our lives believing that we are the ones who create the fruit that we bear? We are the ones who have the talents to do the things that we need to do to get what we want. How often do we, like the branch, forget that we are part of something greater? As a matter of fact, I think it's becoming more and more common in our world that we see that there is no connection between ourselves and something greater within the world, or perhaps larger than that, the cosmos. We don't see a connection between ourselves and that. And Laura, often we don't even see a connection between ourselves and anybody else. We begin to feel that we're independent of all things, much like that branch in the vineyard. And as we begin to feel that, I believe that the fruit that we bear also begins to lose its luster, its beauty, and in the end, withers and dies. There's a beautiful story of a vineyard in the, in the book of Isaiah. And it's about a vineyard that's made and grown grapes 
And God is overseeing this vineyard and loves this vineyard. But in the end, the graves bear only bloodshed and a cry when they were supposed to have bred justice and righteousness. So often our world has no justice and has no righteousness, has no compassion and has no love. In Villeroy, that is because we disconnect ourselves from the giver of life, which our passage today tells us is Jesus Christ. There is something very reassuring, I think, in knowing that we really aren't in this world all by ourselves. That this isn't simply a planet circling around a star in the midst of a huge galaxy, in the midst of a huge universe where nothing cares what happens. Nobody is there. The planet just circles and our lives just go on and nothing matters one way or another. But that is one way to look at the universe and it is the way that we more often than not human beings today see our universe and our lives. But our passages today want to tell us that that's not what the world is about. That's not what our lives are. That they are so much greater than that. That we connect to something greater. And then we have our first John passage. I know it's Suresh's favorite. He was hoping to read it last week. And I got mixed up, and last week's reading wasn't the right one, and we finally straightened that out. This week's reading is, it says, If you cannot love your brother or your sister who you can see, how can you love God who you cannot see? And I think what our passages are getting at is that the connection we have the connection we have to God is a connection of love. It's God's love for us. Is that branch onto which is the vine onto which we as branches are connected. And that love of God permeates not only this world but all that is. And our first John passage talks about Christ who laid down his life for us as a demonstration of the depth of God's love for us. That God's love is so great that God will lay down his life for us. That's the depth of the love that God has for us. And then the saying, if God has that kind of love for us, if that's the connection that we have, then we can love each other. That that love is available to each and every one of us because God first loved us. And the call then is the fruit we are to bear is justice, mercy, compassion, commitment, those are all part of a description of the love that God has for us. And the fruit that God wants us to bear to each other. That's what our John passage, first John passage, is calling for this morning. The connection, Dorothy, is God's love for you, which cannot be broken which cannot die. Christ is crucified on the cross, but raised from the dead. Agnes, there is no way God's love for you can be broken. It is there. It is only we who might, like the branch in the vineyard, choose no longer to draw on that strength for our lives that we might be able to live them out in the kind of love that God has 
for us. And our first John passage says, Brian, you learn to live that out by loving those around you, even people you can't stand. The first John passage says, you learn to live out that love by working and loving each other. And so in the Alleluia Choir saying this morning, we held up our hands and say, I love you to somebody. That's what the passage is telling us to do, to care deeply for each other. And love in the Bible talks about a commitment to the other person, a passion to see that the other person does well, a compassion to want to reach out and make other people's lives better. It's God's love for us expressed through us to each other becomes the way in which our lamp gets connected to the electricity that it might turn on. I mean, it may seem something really simple that the light in the lamp isn't going to turn on if it isn't connected to the electricity, right? Isn't that simple? And yet, how often do we allow ourselves to be broken from the connection of God's love to us and we become like a dead bulb in this world. And finally, our Acts passage talks about what do you do with that love once you have it. The Holy Spirit said to Philip, go out to this road. And there on the road, you will find something that you need to do. And there on the road, an Ethiopian eunuch a man who is unclean, who is not welcome in the temple. And not only that, is a foreigner, is traveling along the road, but we know he's wealthy and he's powerful because he holds the treasury for the queen of Ethiopia. So he couldn't be more powerful than he is. But the Holy Spirit says, Philip, go and talk to him. And he turns out he's reading the book of Isaiah. And he's reading the story of the suffering servant. And he's open to hear because he says to Philip, who is this that they're talking about? And Philip says, you don't know. And he says, how could I know? Nobody's taught me. So Philip teaches him. This is Christ the Lord who suffered and died for you. And the Ethiopian eunuch says, can we stop the carriage? There's water right there. Can you baptize me? And he does. And then the Spirit's got more work for Philip, so he sends him on. Now there's a number of things there. The Ethiopian eunuch was not welcome in the temple. He was unclean, and he was a foreigner. And Philip put his life in danger even to approach him. And yet Philip went, Philip taught, and the man became part of the new faith, which was in Christ the beginnings of the Christian faith, because Philip felt the call and the connection to the Holy Spirit, to God's Spirit in the world, and he went out. So the other part of the message this morning is, yes, we learn to love and care for each other because God first loved us, and then we go out to bring God's message of love to others. So our passages work from the first, the gospel, that says you need to be connected to the first John passage that says the connection is God's love to you and then your love to each other to the Acts passage, which says go out into the world and take that love, Villaroy, to others. That's the challenge. Bear fruit. Seek justice. Live in compassion. Change the world by the way that you live. Reach out to each other and do that in God's love as expressed in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.